Hey everyone, it's Tommy, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a poster in Photoshop. So I'm going to be going through all the basics and all the little skills you need to learn so you can fully utilize Photoshop to its full extent. And then after that, I'm going to guide you through an example poster that I made, just so you can get a taste of the process. And once you've watched the whole thing, you should be able to create a poster all on your own. So I hope you all learned something. I hope you enjoy the video too, and I'll get on to it. Okay, so first I want to talk about tint, shade and tone. Now each of these basically just mean adding one colour to another colour. So tint is adding white, shade is adding black and tone is adding grey. Now the reason I'm telling you this is because of colour schemes. So you can see here we've got monochromatic, triadic, analogous and complementary. And each one of these is basically a different set of rules for choosing colours. So first we've got monochromatic, which is only the use of one colour. And you might be thinking, how do I use one colour to make a whole poster? So this is where tint, shade and tone come in, and these are like a change that one colour. After that we have triadic, which as you can see on the image, is basically just making a triangle on the colour wheel. Then you've got analogous, which is selecting a colour and picking the two other colours besides it on the colour wheel. And finally, complementary, which is picking two colours from opposite ends of the colour wheel. So, if you wanted to create your own colour scheme, I'd recommend going on this website, coolers.co. It's super easy, you just click generate and you can just start making colour schemes just like this. The last thing I want to talk about is tone. You should almost always be using tone because if you're not, your image can end up way too contrasting and it might end up looking like this. Alright, so now that we've done all the design stuff, I'm going to start showing you the basics of Photoshop. So first thing, selection box, selecting things in box form basically, and arrow, arrows for moving said selected things around. So then we've got the paintbrush, with this paintbrush you can select different brush types and colours, you can paint anything on the screen. Then we've got the eyedropper, the eyedropper allows you to pick specific colours and then you can paint them or use the paint bucket. Magic Wand is one of the most powerful tools as it allows you to select similar colours though it might not always work. Text box is for writing all sorts of different texts and different fonts and shapes makes shapes. So now that we've covered the basics I'm going to move on to a couple more advanced techniques and tools and stuff. So I'm going to start off with the clone stamp tool. Now this allows you to sample an area of an image by pressing ALT, then you can use that sample to paint over the image, which is very useful for making something disappear. Blending modes allow you to blend the layer above to the layer below, and each mode has a different way of blending, and it usually works by trying each different one to see what kind of result you'll get. And masking, done by adding a mask at the bottom of the layers section, allows you to blend the layer above to the layer below, based on how dark or light the colour paint you use, white being opaque and black being transparent. Effects, as in image adjustments and filters, allow you to do so many things that you're best off experimenting around with them yourself in your own time. So now that I've taught you all the skills, I'm going to now move on to the process of making a poster. So the first thing I want to talk about is selecting the size of your piece of paper. So since you're making a poster, you're going to either want A3 or A4. And where you can find these is under the print section. So the first thing I started with is using the gradient tool. Now this is quite an easy tool to use and it can sometimes make things so much more interesting than just using a paint bucket. So you just select the tool, you double click the gradient bar, you'll have all your presets and stuff, but you can also make your own and change the opacity, just as I'm doing right here. Then you can lay it all out with different kind of presets. So after that, I decided to stick in some images from Google. I use silhouettes because they're very easy to crop a white background from. However, I came across a problem as the drum kit I wanted to use didn't have a drummer on it. So to combat this, I decided to stick another drummer from a different image on there. I started by selecting the drum kit with the magic wand tool, then using the inverse selection tool, which is command shift I so I could select all the things around the layer. Then I deleted them all. Now the drummer that I wanted to use was in quite a low resolution image. 
So I decided to use the pen tool to create a stencil of him, which I then filled in on the path section, and I stuck the two images together. Then after that, I put gradients on them, and I positioned them up so they looked a bit nicer together. Now this next step is how to create neon, which as you can see I'm doing on the screen right here. Now the way you go about this is first getting the object that you want to turn neon. So I decided to use the text tool to create the word neon. I then rasterized the text layer, which you can do by pressing the button here, and I duplicated it too, making the new one blue by using the paint bucket. I copied the color value, then applied a stroke by going into blending options on the blue text layer. You can see here it creates a border around the object. I then pasted the blue value into the color wheel here. After that I applied a heavy Gaussian blur from the effects menu onto the blue text layer. Then I added a light layer of Gaussian blur to the white layer, and that's how to create a neon. The next thing I did was add the title. Now choosing a font for the title, or any other text for that matter, is a very important element to create in the poster. You should always try lots of different ones before you stick with the one that you want. It can really make a piece stand out like it did to this poster. After this I decided to add some details to the poster by experimenting around with some of the tools and filters until I got something I quite liked. Then I added all the information to the poster, such as the date, time, price and some information about the gig too. And this is the end result. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed.